BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. We are living in a time like no other in history. But fortunately for us, God wrote it down all in His prophecies what would happen next. Find out what prophecies came true this week, ripped straight from the headlines. Verily I say unto you, the only way to rightly understand prophecy is from a messianic Hebrew roots perspective, for without the roots the tree is dead. Stay tuned for the Prophecy News Headline Show, The Remnants Call. Welcome to The Remnants Call. The Sledgehammer Show, take two. We're going to talk about prophecy, politics, religion, straight truth. We're going to be talking about straight truth today on The Sledgehammer Show. I am your host for the show, Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman from Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation, where Jew and Gentile worship the Lord together, following the Palabra de Dios of the Santa says, the words of God from Genesis through the book of Revelation. Today, we are joined by the family the rabbis, the Rebbesons, and the Padawan. And, and we're joined by Rav Ed and Rebbeson Veronica. We're joined by a blank screen with Rav Will McCubbins and his wonderful wife, Rebbeson Reina. We're joined on the line by the young Padawan, Mr. Joshua Lara, and his wife that's probably taking care of children. We're going to be talking about children today on the Sledgehammer Show. We're going to be talking about the drill sergeant the drill sergeant the topic of today's show is the drill sergeant we're going to be talking about starting our scripture off today with an expanded version of the remnants called the sledgehammer show proverbs 21 verse 2 all a person weighs are right in his own view but jehovah weighs the heart jehovah weighs the heart see what we're talking about here is that everybody will do what's right in their own eyes and also in Isaiah chapter 5, it talks about that, everybody doing what's right in their own eyes. And our children today are doing what's right in their own eyes because our parents are not teaching the children's the right, the children's, I'm sounding like you guys, the children, the right way to follow the Lord. Okay? Each person is doing what is right in their own eyes. Each kid is doing, I want my trophy, I want my faith base. It's all about me instead of about God and the Messiah Yeshua. What we're going to be talking about, too, is we're going to go to this next slide here. A drill sergeant is a symbol of excellence in initial entry training. An expert in all warrior tasks and battle drills, lives, army values, that exemplifies the warrior's ethos, and most importantly, the epitome of the army as a profession. See, we're supposed to be drill sergeants for our children. We're not to be their friends. We're to be their drill sergeants, or to train them up in God's ways, or to train them up in the perfect ways. The reason is because we got 1,944 forcible rapes. I guess other rapes are not, not that way, okay, in 14. But here, this is why we're talking about it in mind. Maybe we'll even get some women's opinions here today. Some women's. Proverbs 22, Michelle 22, verse 15. Doing wrong is firmly tied to the heart of a child. But the rod of discipline will drive it far away from him. Doing wrong, in this morning's uh, theology class with our school children, our homeschool children, I talked about having a knot in your sneaker. Okay? Imagine getting, you know, getting a, did anyone, I said, did the kids, anybody ever get a knot in their sneaker? You know, where you, you, you couldn't get it out, you had to take it off your foot, and then you, you, even, you were like trying to bite it, and you're like trying to get the knot out of your sneaker. Doing wrong is firmly tied to the child. Let's bring on one of the women. Let's bring on, who should we do first? Robinson Veronica! You heard our class this morning, and we talked about this with the children. Doing wrong is firmly tied to the children. What do you think about this? I need a woman's opinion here. Is, am I right or am I wrong? Is God right or wrong? Amen. Oh, shalom, everyone. Um, well, Proverbs 22, 15 is uh, very clear when he talks about uh, the imagining of our heart. You know, uh, when we are little, we are still, um, um, we commit sin. And it's in purpose. Because uh, as we know, we were born with the with Torah in our hearts, so we know what is right. 
I always tell my kids uh, that in, uh, at the ministry, at the children's ministry, that when I was little, and there was something, there was uh, times that I had to choose whether to lie or not. There was something inside of me that would tell me that it was bad. So we have that in our hearts, in our minds. So um, our children, they have um, their intentions are not good. And when their children, when the children ha uh, happen to do bad, when they uh, wanted to misbehave or something. One, uh, the parents' um, responsibility is to discipline them because if we don't do that, we're going to have a society full of capricious children that, as we're seeing the statistics right now, everything is going into chaos. But don't you, don't you think you're going to hurt their feelings and they're going to be scarred for life? That's what the world tells you. We're going to hurt their pretty little feelings and because you mommy you hurt my feelings i hate you well so far my children are fine <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I, they are not heard they're happy they're happy girls they're still walking. but when they meet they're still walking in their okay but uh, you know when they need the discipline then we we can spare that because we want them to be an example for other children outside in the world the world don't like them. Right? That's amazing. Doing wrong is firmly tied to the heart of a child. This morning I talked to the kids, you know, about this. And, you know, because you know, some of the kids, I want to go back to public school. I want to be back in public school. You know, be, you know, this is boring, you know. It's because your parents are not disciplining you. Rabbits and Raina, why do you think it is so firmly tied and how do we untie that knot if we we can't the world says we can't discipline our child child or children? You know, how do we untie this knot? You know, is it, it are they gonna be scarred for life? Actually, Rebbits and Reina's not in here. She's been busy working on grading those homeschool papers where those uh, few kids you're talking about didn't want to be. <laughs> so she's uh, in another room but no I don't think the kids will be scarred for life that's for sure and the Lord is correct in Proverbs twenty-two fifteen. doing wrong is firmly tied to the heart of a child because remember when you were a child all of you guys and ladies when you guys were children did anybody sit you down and have to teach you how to lie did anybody teach you how to be stingy, selfish, or anything like that when you were a little kid? Nobody had to. It was already in there. But the Lord gave us the answer. The rod of discipline will drive it far from him. Sometimes the rod of discipline is merely a barrier. And sometimes the rod of discipline is teaching the correct way to go. And sometimes the rod of discipline is force, you know? So, but the parents, the, the, the root of all these problems, that, that chart you showed with all the forcible rapes, I guess forcible rape, I guess they're calling that different than like date rape, coercion rape or whatever. I don't know. Maybe if you're Muslim, they're not counting it as forcible since it's religious or something. But... Anyway, you see all those crimes and everything, the parents just aren't teaching. They're falling down on their job because they want, they want quiet. And people confuse quiet for peace. But quiet can be a very, very different thing than peace. So it's all, it's all because the parents refuse to train the child in the way he should go. And that's the bottom line. Training a child in the way that they should go, let's get back to this. And then we'll bring our young Padawan, who's got a lot of rugrats in his house. Proverbs 22, verse 15. Doing wrong is firmly tied to the heart of a child, but the rod of discipline will drive it far away. Now, from him. Now, young Joshua, um, 
you're a martial arts uh, aficionado. Um, tell us a little bit about that type of discipline and how that equates to our scripture. Shalom, everybody. And I appreciate um, being here with you guys in this Celeste Shammer show. I know the Celeste Shammer is the one who hit so hard, really nice right now. And uh, <laughs> talking about the kids and uh, discipline. Not only for the kids, but because the kids growing up, once you're growing up, you're not a kid anymore, but you still have to receive that <laughs> slash on the show in your head. So, um, um, I um, it's amazed me the uh, amazed me the, the the proverbs talking about the disciplines and the the rod of discipline specifically, because um, in the martial arts, um, well, um. It doesn't look like anymore, but um, only in movies. But um, in the reality of the those masters, uh, once you're close to them, they still use the rod. They still use um a tool for a hit when you're doing something wrong. When you do a move that is not correct, because sure. um even if it, if it looks like it'll be good, but it's not perfect. It's not on the right position. Um, if you're used to it. You um you gotta be that kind of teacher that is you know like in nowadays there's no as I said there's no more teachers like teach like that like you know back in the days when they used to hit me and um and I have to you know stay still and you know correct my position um because that's the base and specifically in the beginning of the of the road in the martial arts so. It's exactly like this. It's amazing. This, this, this proverb. It's at the beginning of the, of the road, is when you are a child. So if you don't correct the move, on time, the position, the, if you don't discipline that way, and, um, and sometimes you need that real, that, that you know that rod of the of the discipline because, if you learn wrong, the result is gonna be wrong. The result is gonna be. Exactly like that. You gotta fail in the battle. You gotta fail in a, in a competition that people used to see. And worse scenarios, you gotta fail in the street because it's people tough in the street. Even if you don't think there are no martial arts, or uh, you know, there's crazy guys that are already trained by probably their parents or their, you know, their families or or the situation in the society. You know, they used to learn the, the the bad ways and using weapons and everything but um and involve this with a child it's um it make make me think about it it's like wow it's like as as you say as a drill sergeant as a you know personal training or uh martial art you know teacher have to force have to force that point have to force the perfection for for getting there, for getting to a, for the proper position to the proper way. So it's very nice. It's very interesting. The interesting, the other interesting part of this is also it's saying the child is doing wrong is firmly tied to the heart. And when you try to take that thing away from the child, do you think the child is going to give it willingly? You know, our job is to train them for war. We're in a battle for their souls here. And you know, we were talking earlier today about Joseph Go uh, Goebbels from the Nazi Party. His whole thing was to train up the children. His whole thing was then the the radio because television had just begun okay so radio was big newspapers were big he was in charge of all media and and what one of the things he did in the schools was t take all the books out burn all these books burn the bible get rid of the bible so that we could train them up in the way that they wanted those children to go now not just six million jews died 40 to 60 million other people died because of Israel's disobedience and God using the world to chastise him. 
But doing wrong is firmly tied. And when you try to untie that stuff, you're going to have problems. You're going to have uh, uh, problems in your home. You're going to have problems with your children. You, you know, you're just a meanie, Ma. You're just a mean dad. I'm going to call 911. Go ahead. Here's the phone. But just remember, you're leaving with all the clothes on your back, okay? And, you know, you know, when you go live in somebody else's house and all this bad stuff happens to you, don't call me, okay? Doing wrong is firmly tied to the job. Oh, I'm going to call Dyfus, you know, and we're going to take the other children. Don't worry, we'll make more, okay? Me and your mother will make more children and we'll forget about you. No, we won't forget about you, okay? How do you think the door and the rambler got that way? What do you think there, Rabbit? How, you know, what do you think about, you know, when you, you, you know, your daughter with her shoe thing there? You know, and then putting her in the shower and running the water on her, okay? You know, she, it was, her way was firmly rooted in her. Where did that come from? I do believe that coming from the heart, because we, we born in sin, as uh, King David says, and uh, that the Lord sh show us to train the child we have with burning guilty, from the from the from the beginning and that is what we need to by God knowledge we have to be strong and teach our kids in the right way to do as a as Ephesians six says you know is the honor of father and mother you know that is the that commandment and and, and the, the the with the promise because by doing that they're gonna grow up with with blessing, if they honor father and mother, what does that mean? Honoring, being an example for the for the world, being a, a straight, being a educating, first of all, in God's word, words, because uh, the, we're forgetting why we're here. We're here first. The Lord, the Lord created us to worship Him and only Him alone, and we cannot worship Him while we're behaving bad. Well. Well, we have kids that they don't behave good. This is a, a really hard job with the, that we cannot do, we can't do without God, with his knowledge. We have to encourage ourselves to, to be willing to chastise our own kids because uh, we love them. The Lord give us as a as a gift from, from the Lord, but we have to discern the love. What is love? Yeshua says, "If you love me, you follow my commandments." We have to discern what is that love. As we talked in, in some more, um, long time ago about in, in the in the in the garden, then the Lord has to kill one of their friends, one animal to to for their sin. If we don't correct our kids, something worse can happen. And as in the times that we live in right now, if we do if we don't stray our kids, the curses are gonna start, you know, to the second and third generation and keep going like that because eventually they're gonna forget about God's teaching. So it's a big, big responsibility for our for us as a parents, we have to act as a drill sergeant with, with God's help. I'm talking about the drill sergeant, Semper Fi, do and I, sir! You're listening to the Remnants Call the Sledgehammer Show! We're going to be back right after this minute! Go hit the dog on donate button, we're going to give you the information! We'll be right back after this message! This is the Shalom Ranger with WTRC Radio. We'll be right back after a short commercial break with more news, true news, that is really happening around the world. Remember, in everything you do, praise Adonai. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to the Remnants Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, bethgoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, 
we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. Welcome back to The Remnants Call, The Sledgehammer Show. I am your host for this show, Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman from Beth Goyim International Messianic Ministry, where Jew and Gentile worship as one people. We teach the Department of True Education because Yeshua said, something you don't want to hear in heaven when you get there, get away from me, you who do not follow the Torah. We believe in Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah. Some people know him as Jesus. I mean Jesus. Okay? His real Hebrew name is Yeshua. I am joined on the line by Casa Manjaris, the house of Manjaris. Casa Lara, the house of Lara. And I, the Scottish household of McCubbins. Rav Will McCubbins and Rev. Serena, who's listening in on the other side of the room. The two. We've got the family here today. We're talking about the, the remnants called the Sledgehammer Show. We're going out to our next slide. Doing wrong, we've been talking about doing wrong is firmly tied to the, the heart of a child. Now, why is that? Because here in Psalm 51, verse 5, true, I was born guilty, was a sinner from the moment my mother, I'll do it like Ariel, mother, mother conceived me. All right. So we're born into sin, and each... So, generation from the God of the den, we get worse and worse and worse. But we're talking about um, now the, ch- the children. We're born guilty. We must train this Adam. We must be their drill sergeant. As a drill sergeant, you are responsible for coaching, counseling, and mentoring of hundreds, if not thousands of soldiers, as you transform them from a civilian to a combat-ready soldier. Okay, it says in the, the scriptures also, blessed is a man who has a full quiver. Okay, you're to teach your children at home. We're talking about homeschooling. But sometimes a child, because sin is firmly rooted. I don't want to do this, Mom. And, you know, this is stupid. I don't see any of my friends. I'm bored. I want to go out and play. I want to play dodgeball. I want to do this. I want to do that. Your job as parents is to be their drill sergeant so that they get one day that back into heaven. God sent them as a gift to you, and now you got to train them back up. What do you think there, Rav, uh, Rav Will? What do you think about this responsibility? You know, you got some kids that are potato heads. That's right. They're big potato heads. They're in their 20s. See, the problem grows and grows and grows. You know, you let them color outside of the lines in that little coloring book, and, you know... The next thing you know, they're living with a stripper. It gets bigger and bigger. The, a little, a little, uh, a little move of the boundary line, a little move of the boundary stone, and it gets easier and easier over time to move that thing, and it, and they feel it less and less because the Holy Spirit's a gentleman, and if you ignore him, he'll just he'll go somewhere where he's wanted. So. <clears throat> the the root cause of the problem we have in this society is like I've said many times the parents fall down and what stuns me is so many people that are in the church supposedly living for the Lord you know at least we weren't pretending when our kids were little we were just secular so but think of all the people who are in the messianic uh, movement or in the church movement that are claiming that they're righteous and they're just not doing their job with their kids. So that's that's the root. The parent has to instill right and wrong. I've heard it said that you have until the child is 10 or 11 years old and if you haven't done it by then, they're they're 
foundation of what's right and wrong is set and that's the way they're going to go for the next decade anyway see one one of the things you know in that next decade one of the things that's really important and i'll go to young padawan joshua next is as a drill sergeant you're preparing them for war and in war one can't think they must react it must be motor movement it must be memory motor movement and if you're worrying about whether or not your snowflake child is is you know they're they're going to turn out bad they're going to turn out bad because you didn't take responsibility mentoring you know because we've all made mistakes none of us walk with the lord our entire life okay and we made mistakes and we don't want our children to make mistakes but the best book the best guidance is b i b l e basic instructions before leaving earth bible oh basic instruction before leaving earth bible you mean we need to make our children combat ready because our rights are being assaulted by the pagans you disgusting pieces of garbage out there okay you can't pray in public. You tell me I can't pray in public. I'm going to pray louder. There was this new story today um, by Todd Starnes that um, you know somebody's being sued because you know they used to go to church together and they uh, they and they were also colleagues at work. And you know the person was going through something and they said, "I'll pray for you." And you can't do that at work anymore. Shut up, you demon from the pit of hell! I can't pray for you. Oh yes, I'll go fornicate for you. Well, that'll be fine. Oh, I hope your faggot lover is, is fine, you know. What is this? We need to be responsible for training up soldiers so that we can take back this country that was founded on God's word. You know what? Hey, Josh, man, you know, you, you, you got the Brazilian jiu-jitsu, okay, or something like that. Uh, I've been watching some of those MMA fights. you got to teach people once on the ground. It's, it's always the loss when, once you, and whenever it is, you got to learn how to be really good on the ground. you got to be a Greco-Roman wrestler. you got to learn how to sit out and spin and take that leg and take that arm, rip it behind their head and beat them with it. Okay? Now, in your instructions, with you, you know, you, you, have you ever had any snowflakes in your class? You know, or, you know, oh, Ninja Johnny, we you so mean, I'm not going back. You know, what do you do with the snowflakes? It's funny because, um, actually, we did it. We didn't have, or they don't show it like that, um, especially at the beginning of the training um, when we start. The, um, the face of everybody, and it's, it's general, it's out of when you're out of shape, you you try to stop, but um, but you push it as a drill sergeant, as a trainer, as a uh, you know monitor and instru instructor. You try to push the student. You try to push every everything that, and you know the limits of the people. You know, even um, even I saw people you know throw it out right there because they can't. They want to stop a long time ago, but we push it through to the limits. Um, but um, you don't have to be a snowflake, like like you say, to <laughs> to be somebody, um, you know, to push it through. Um, um, we used to get up at five o'clock because we there's a certain point that we have to live in the in the academy. So we we be a group of. Um, I'm talking about when I was a student too. Um, we are a group of students living in the academy, and the master make us get up at five o'clock, sometimes at four, um, to train. And um, our neck was already prepared for what is coming because it was just, you know, they put put, put us to sleep all the time. So, is <laughs> at the same time it's like risky, but. Um, but at the same time, your neck it turns like nobody can, you know, make you make you go down or nothing. So my point is that the those hours, you know, of and and that group of students, I'm talking about, we don't we don't pay anymore. At the beginning, we used to pay to the teacher, but once you move to the academy, 
that's it. You pay with with you know with blood. <laughs> you pay with with um, with everything that you have right there, and especially you don't have money because you're working. You live right there, but um, in the in the in the perspective of the Bible, and the perspective that I'm I'm trying to think right now when. The, the Lord also says, that, you know, that the people have to get up, you know, f f um, try to search him in the in the morning, in the real morning. Out the, it's still dark. When it's still dark, just try to, try to, you know, try to find the Lord. And if, I think if we train, now we're talking about training the kids in the way they should go, in the way of the Lord, in the really morning, in the really things, things that the, the, they're also my kids can't because <laughs> because you already know in the class how they're doing you know like try to sleep but make me think right now to try to start doing this doing this this training intensive you know and um in the both way in the spiritual way for pray for uh searching for the lord and the physical training because that's why we get good in the physical we get good because we have to get up super early, even if we go to sleep early too, because you know, also the master let us sleep, you know, let us rest, but and 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 the time to to rest. But um, when all the people were doing parties and everything, we were you know, um, sleeping and you know, eating good. And this time, I think eating good is the word of God. Eating eating good is, and I think that time that time of the training. It's never gonna make you be uh, a snowflake if you're doing, you know, whatever the Lord says according to the scripture. So Joshua brings up a good point. He talked about getting up early. In Ecclesiastes, call at eleven, verse nine and ten. Young person, if you spend your youth only having fun, if you use your early years just to entertain yourself, if you follow your heart. As you live your life and let your eyes be your guide, understand that all these things, God, Elohim, will bring you to judgment. Therefore, remove anger from your heart and keep from harming your body, for neither adolescence nor youth has any lasting value. That's a powerful line at the end there. For neither adolescence nor youth has any lasting value. I always tell the kids, your opinion means absolutely nothing to me. And absolutely, you have no experience, no responsibility. Shut your little young heart and listen to the older people. Now, Robertson Veronica, is that mean? Am I doing damage to the child? Or, you know, is God correct through his Shamash Shlomo here? Well... I think. <laughs> well, go ahead. Speak your mind. Let's let's hear. We're, I've invited you on. Speak your mind. We're <laughs> fair and balanced. <laughs> no, I think correction is good. Yeah, I think correction is good. But here is one thing: for the child not to live. For, it says that if you spend. Um, Young person, if you spend your youth only having fun, if you use your early years just to entertain yourself, who who teaches a child to just waste their time? Their time is their parents. There are some parents that they know they have that responsibility of taking care of their children, but they have, and I've seen, I've heard this. There have been so many parents that say, "I'm gonna give my child what my what I couldn't have." when I was a kid. So the, there are some parents that just give their children anything they want, the desire of their heart, the desire of their flesh, anything they want. And then we have, a, they have, we have children with society, we're in a society where you can, when I've seen that, when I go to do the, 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 the weekly shopping, there have been children that, which the parents do not want to give them anything, that, I mean, their candy or a toy, whatever, and then they throw themselves on the floor. The child is born in sin. We are born in sin. But then is when we have to act as parents and we have to teach them 
how to use their time. We are not supposed to just train them uh, uh, in math and science, but we are supposed to train them in life skills. You know, to girls, we have to train them to use their time the way that they're supposed to do it. To little boys, their parents are supposed to teach them, their, their, their fathers, they're supposed to teach them the skills that they need to. Because then we have a lazy society that, it, that cannot do anything. So we as parents, we have to be, we have to take that responsibility. Those that are just, uh, after I'm giving my child everything they want, you know, they, are the one, they have to start, you know, taking this, this matter seriously. Because at the end, they're going to be judged by God saying, why did you do this to my kid? You know, so if we want our, ch our, our young, our, our teens to know how to use their time, to know how to, how to uh, be, how to um, have, I don't know, how can I say this? Um, you know, for, for, them, for them to be able to use their time the, the right way, we, we have to teach them since they are little. We cannot... We cannot uh, uh, leave, let our children just, uh, you know, act the way that they want it. We have to stop that behavior. We have to stop that behavior. Well, how do you stop it? I remember a time that, that we had some new people come to the congregation. And there was this two-year-old that was screaming at first. You know, I was like, parent, you're going to do something about about this? And then the next the child wasn't getting their way. And the child started to beat on their mother. So that's when I had enough. I'm like, I started to yell at the kid. And people were like, and then I left the pulpit and I got all up inside the child's face. What are you doing? That is not going to happen in my father's house. See, in the Latin community, that doesn't get done. You yelled at my child. It's because they're, what? Hold that finger. I got my piece here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I do it. It's not all Latin community, okay? My oh, grandma. You, you, oh, my, you, my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> you you told me, you know, well, I can't yell at that kid, the person's going to... If you, that child needs a good whooping and a big talking to, because here the scripture is saying that, you know, they're, they're, they're pleasure-driven, they're, they're me-driven, they're brats. Rab Ed, what do you got to say? <laughs> Interesting topic, and I also, wait, I can add a little more on this, uh, how we can take this away from, from the kids, you know, we gotta understand it, even in progress, we have to always follow the word of God. Um, that's for you. Look at it. <laughs> you know, there's some Latino moms that have the chancla, and you know them. You know, the chancla. <laughs> but, but it's interesting, they have the chancla, and they use it very sparingly, but look, Josh has got the, ch and somebody's got a chancla there, but when you yell at a child because their parent is not doing it, that's when we run into situations. It's because sin is firmly tied to the child's heart. And do you think when, when you try to remove that, that child's not going to fight like a horse? You try to ride, but anybody ever tried to ride a horse for the first time? No. Okay, the horse, what's the horse going to do? Rah, rah, get off me, get off me, get off me, get off And, you know, a lot of people get seriously injured, okay, until you make that, until you break that horse. And we got to break our children. Go ahead, Mr. Ed. <laughs> Don't break our children. <laughs> well, to break that, I want to, like I said, I want to add, we uh, have to prove that God thought he thought in everything because as in here in Proverbs 2 says for for Jehovah gives wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding we have to understand first the way that we we have to teach our kids the way that we need to serve Jehovah 
because on the verse 10 says, for wisdom will enter in your heart, knowledge will be enjoyable for you. So the wisdom will enter in your heart. We know that we're born in sin, and the heart are evil. But once when we, when, when we allow God coming in our lives, that knowledge, we, we got to go and share with our, with our kids. So the knowledge of good. Remember, the Lord don't control our hearts. The Lord is a gentle person who, who's looking for the righteous heart. If we, if we can get to those kids to behave the right way, the, the way that the Lord wants, to, to penetrate in their hearts, to, to, to put that toy in there, we, we, brought, we, we have toy inside, but to let it explore the Torah. And just by doing that, we will be getting a more chance, more time, before the Lord dis destroyed the, the war, you know? Because the judgment is coming. Ivana, do you have any chankla sayings? Can you say again, please? I don't know what the 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 <laughs> My man liked to use like dip here. Uh, oh, a pinch? Yes, he's a head a lot. But when she is sick, she gonna speak uh, like a three, four, five, now. You listen, if you don't listen, you get in trouble, big trouble. But this one working. Well, it, it's not working with me and my sister, but I think uh, with my brothers, she need, she don't do too much. <laughs> it sounds like she tra she um trained nice the, the ladies, but uh, the boys is like. <laughs> Anyways, um, Rob, I took it about that um that kind of experience of the. And uh, Rabbi mentioned uh, the the Torah in our hearts. Um, it's um it's hard it's hard to it's hard to understand that point because um, <clears throat> it's a it's too many nice and too many beautiful things in the Torah, and um, because our flesh um, and our iniquity. Um, it's like our our hearts going too too much too much following the 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 bad things of the of the not the not the Torah doesn't have anything bad. Um, as all the contrary show us the bad things, right? Um, the bad things that we have, and then even that we have the Torah in our hearts, it's like. It's like our flesh wants to go against the Torah that we have in our hearts. It's like, I want to do the country. It's like, a, exactly like you say, Rav. It's like the little child um, always wants to do a country. Like, even if you say yes, it's oh, no. Uh, oh, yes. Oh, no. So, it's like so amazing how the Torah is so, so good and and uh, the our hearts is going always... Um, it's like our heart says, oh, no, to the Torah. <laughs> uh, oh, you want to have something. Um, sometimes um, it's beautiful when I'm, I'm start learning the Torah and and how I walk in the in the world of Yehovah and teaching the world for, for my child. And this is a challenge. But it's a challenge where I go learning the Torah and I go teaching the Torah at the same time. And this is a beautiful part. <laughs> but too much, don't know, uh, a lot of parents don't, don't think like that. 
and don't try show uh, his kid this the this way. Even my kid, sometimes I'm saying, no, they say I want this one. No, you do, you can want it. It's a discovery. You don't need it. Yes, I want it. I need it. Why you need it? <laughs> and this the try to show my kids what they need, but they learn in the COVID is bad. Something is uh, a little bit hard for them, but his mind thinking no, is mommy have something wrong. <laughs> 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 but it's beautiful. This part of learning the Torah and teaching my kid the Torah. But I want to they they walk in the right way with Jehovah, like me, and I'm learning. Me. Mm -hmm. So they have to walk in the, the the right ways of the Torah, and they'll follow the parents. If you you don't spare the rod, see the world says. No, you can't spank them. You're going to scar them for life. Okay. How many of us, give me a thumbs up or thumbs down, how many of us were spanked? Okay. We got a rabbit's and rain. I saw a finger there. We got lots of fingers there. Okay. Are, are you scarred? Okay. If you're, not, if you're not scarred, I'm not scarred. Put a thumbs down. I'm not scarred, okay? I'm not scarred. Okay, I don't have these mental issues. Okay, the world says, you know, and it started in the 60s with this idiot Dr. Spock, you can't spank your child. You're going to scar them for life. No, you're going to, that is the quintessential opposite of the perfect word of God. But when you try to correct the child, the child, excuse me, the child is going to be like the horse. No, 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 don't ride me. Don't, I, I don't want to, I'm going to do what I want to do. I want to do what I want to do. What I want to do. That's what we heard. So this is why we homeschool our children. So because the public school is a breeding ground of evil. It's the Joseph Goebbels of, of the Nazi party is in our public school. They're going to teach all evil. I asked one of the kids this morning, what did they teach in health class? And one of the young one boys who's been out of school, you know, this is his first year in homeschooling. Oh, yeah, they taught us about homosexual sex. They taught them how to have anal sex in public school. And you get mad at me because I, I want to talk about something positive in the Word of God and training the child the way that they should go so that they won't depart? Is Raina there now? I thought I saw a thumb from Raina. No? She's still? Oh, that was your thumb. All right, let's go over. Let's go to the next scripture, and then we'll do another few more minutes. You're listening to the Remnant Call, the Sledgehammer Show, the family edition. If you like it, let us know. Maybe we'll keep doing it like this. All right, let's go to the last scripture here. Okay, and we talked about this earlier. Okay, let me just, I forgot what slide number it is. Okay, Mishal, Proverbs 29, verse 21, a slave who is pampered from youth will be, will in the end be ungrateful. This is what we got with the EBT cards and the, the social programs of all the, of the government. And I'm not even just going to say the Democrats. The Republicans are a lot of crappy programs too. Okay? You know, you know what God says? If you got no money uh, and you got no food, there's the corner of the field. The farmer's got to leave it and go pick what you need from the corner of the field. Not the whole field, the corner of the field. It's going to be marked off. Okay? Uh, what do you think, there, Rav? Well, about this slave being pampered from youth? You know, they're gonna, you know, you got these children. You didn't love me, mommy. You didn't buy me enough toys. You didn't buy me this. I want to go back to public school. I want to play dodgeball. I want to do this. I want to do that. <laughs> well, that's right. If somebody's pampered, they're not made to. They're not made to produce for themselves. Uh, they will be ungrateful. It's just, it's just a simple fact. It's. God said that because he knew what he created. He created us. He knows us. That's the reason for the corner of the field as opposed to the EBT card. The EBT card, the SNAP card, all this other stuff, most of those folks don't have the first concept how much money somebody that actually owns something 
has to cough up every year so they can have that stuff. That's taken by force. The Lord does not, the Lord never intended things to be taken by force from someone and given to someone else. It's a heart condition. The Lord wanted people with blessings and with things to be a blessing to others. Hence, leave the corner of the field. Also, that's another, that's another blessing of the Lord. If a poor person goes to the corner of the field or goes and gleans behind the pickers at the edge of someone's field, that preserves their dignity. They realize that the Lord, their God, actually gave them the right to do that and that they can go out and do some work that produces some food for their self and they know that it's rightfully theirs. So nobody can so nobody can say, Oh, look at that guy. You know, he's gotta he's gotta use snap to feed his kids because he's no good. So the Lord created a perfect system. Uh, we we messed it up because, you know, people a lot of people are bleeding hearts. They feel sorry for people because they don't have stuff. You know, oh, they're, they're less fortunate. Oh, and, and what they really mean is they don't have a lot of stuff, so let's feel sorry for them and give them stuff. No, give them the word of God from their youth, and then you won't have to give them stuff. I think another part of the scripture that adds to that there, Revel, is um, shame. My dad had his heart attack. Uh, I was uh, like four or five years old. He had a heart attack, and we lost everything. But we never collected public assistance. We ate less. <laughs> At one time, we were all thin. I know that's hard to believe, okay? We were all really thin. Because we were we were we were almost Latin. We were eating well. We weren't eating beans and rice. We were eating Shoprite macaroni and cheese or Kraft macaroni and cheese if we got a little bit of money. Back then it was four boxes for a dollar. Okay, four boxes for a dollar of the shop. You get six boxes of the Shoprite for a dollar, and four of the Kraft, which tastes a little bit better because they're Velveeta. Their, their powder was a little bit better. And then we ate chicken so much, I started to walk like a chicken. Okay? But we never, because it was an embarrassment for a Jew to accept public assistance. Because a slave who was pampered from youth, when the end, be, he, he's ungrateful for all the blessings that God has showered upon us. Let's add a little bit more estrogen back into our show. We'll go for another six more minutes. Let's add the Rebo Vero. Let's see what the estrogen part of our sledgehammer show. The pink sledgehammer now coming. <laughs> My point exactly. I was that raised to British children. Well, that's what happened. And yes, I mean, um, uh, I met someone uh, when I used to work, you know, and now I'm living richly homeschooling. <laughs> <laughs> um, and is Brittany around? Maybe we can get a little teenager input. Imagine that she's cooking that. She's making cookies. Anyway, <laughs> um, I met someone, and she she would tell me that um, uh, one day she had to go and social assistance because she felt so bad. And there was a moment when she lost her job, and her husband lost her job, and she said that she had to go to social assistance that. She didn't just conform to that, you know. She she had to go and get the food, but she said, I would feel so embarrassed because I felt people looking at me. You know, when when, they, when I was on the line, I saw people looking at me, I, I, I felt ashamed. So, as soon as she could, she found that job and she dropped that, that assistant. I think if, if a person, you know, secularly talking, the person needs that assistance but they know that they have that goal of finding a job or getting out of that problem that they're having you know but when you 
when you just, I mean, to the to the area where we live, like the next city, uh, uh, next town was. I think most of the people that live on that town live <laughs> live on the welfare, and it's it's embarrassing. I mean, it's embarrassing. Like the whole the whole checkout line of the supermarket, especially uh, I mean the the local ones. You'll see the people that there are lines. And the line is completely with people with uh, with uh, with, uh, with uh, the uh, the checks, and it's embarrassing. And the problem is that that the, the, those families that are that are receiving that assistance and the parents do not change that way of living. You know, they don't they don't fight. They don't try to get out of that situation. They are teaching their, their kids to do the same thing. So you're going to find generations and, fa and families that uh, go generation to generation with, ch with teenagers being pregnant, with, with uh, families applying for assistance, and that's why the country is like that. You know, so that's what it is. Well, you've heard a lot of... Uh... Wonderful information tonight. You've got a bunch of more different opinions. You got the family edition. We need to train up our children because evil is firmly tied to their hearts. But it is tied to the parents' hearts. That's why a lot of people don't like us talking about the law. The law of God is perfect. It makes you look inside yourself. The law of God is going to be applied in the next life in heaven. And we're all going to be judged judged on the law of God. And you can't just say, I'm covered in the blood of Cheez-Its. No, that's not going to work. We must train our children in the way that they should go. Their opinion matters not to us. What opinion matters is God's opinion. And God is the same yesterday today and forever on the cross our messiah said it's finished he ran the race and his job of calling people to repentance was over and now it was put in our court you've been listening to the remnants call the sledgehammer show i bid you an amen and an amen and an amen. Shalom. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to the Remnants Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, BethGoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, BethGoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. Shalom, 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture, truly the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close the Shabbat together with the reading of the New Week's Parashah. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, Many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and biblical holy day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, YESHUA. Shalom.